evening. It is I, your favourite reviewer. Now today I'm going to be apparently dancing as I do this. Um, now I'm going to be doing. Okay, I'm going to be doing a review of a very classic film. I've decided. In fact, quite a few classic films that I happen to own. And I actually found just found this because I thought I'd lost it. Today we are going to be starting with this, The Fly. And The Fly 2. Now, this is a remake of an original film of the same title. So, the story revolves around Jeff Goldblum and Gina, da Gina Davis. Yeah, here's one. Yeah, Gina Davis. And the story revolves around Seth Brundle, who is not a scientist per se. He is kind of, as he describes himself, you know, I'm just someone who puts pieces together. And he's invented a teleportation device called a telepod which is effectively what Gene Davis calls a giant designer phone booth now I should point out this film was made back in let's see if I can find it 1986 so I was about two years old no four years old at the time and um, the story revolves around as I said Jeff Goblin playing Seth Brundle and Gene Davis who plays a, a reporter called Oh, sorry, hang on. Oh, that, Ronnie, that's it. It's been a while since I watched it actually. Called Ronnie, who um this who at a convention finds him, and uh, he basically explains that he gets uh, motion sickness really badly, which is why he's putting a lot of faith into these telepods. Now he goes back, shows her how the uh, the machine working and everything, and then she starts to record it. To cut long story short, he says, I can send anything inorganic, so for instance, you know, a remote, my phone, uh, a DVD, scarf, anything like that, absolutely perfectly fine. But the second he tries to send anything organic, such as, say, myself, um, it, something really horrible happens, and he's trying to work out the kinks. Uh, to cut long story short, those two split off for a bit, and then we, we meet up <coughs> after... She uh, tracks him down. No, tell like uh, after he tracks her down, and then um, they have a bit, of, a bit of a romance, and they uh, she starts to document his experiments, and the idea is that at the very end, when he's got all the kings out, he will then teleport himself, and then that will be the final end of it. However, what happens is they send the monkey through, and it ends up turned in, like, inside out, and he really just loses it, and he's not interested. And then he finds out that the editor of the paper, or magazine, I think, magazine, I think it is, that Ronnie works for, is actually the ex-boyfriend. And he gets drunk, and Seth gets drunk one night and says, you know, you're fine, to the other monkey, who happens to be the brother of the monkey that went through, says, you yeah, know, you're fine, I'm going to do it. So he sets up the camera and everything, but what he doesn't realise is that there's a fly in there with him, and both get teleported from one pod to another and that's when things start to go weird because for instance um his mood changes so he's having a cup of coffee and he's putting something like 14 sugars in it and he's just not realizing it his strength suddenly becomes unbelievably more power i want to say powerful in a way like for instance he's having an arm wrestle and he just snaps the arm of the bloke, the uh, the opponent, and then he um, tell, then he picks up this girl and then takes her back, and um, tries to sleep with her, but that doesn't work because she she's like, no, you're too rough, and then he, Seth gets really jealous as Ronnie comes back, and they have a bit of an argument, she and he throws her out. He then starts to notice when he's in his bathroom that um, he's getting all these little bits on his face, and he thinks he's dying, and that's when he notices his hand. Like his neck, his fingernails are starting to come off, so he pulls them off, and it's just, and squeezes it, and there's plastic goes all over the window. He thinks he's dying, so he goes back to the computer, has a read of it, and then he says, you know, subject A, subject, you know, uh, subject A bundle, subject B unknown, and he finds out is that it was actually a flight in the telepod, and that the computer got confused. There weren't supposed to be two genetic symbols in the pod with it at the time, so it fused the two together. So he's currently mutating, and um, the outcome is that he will become 
a human hybrid of human of a human and a fly. The course of the actual mutation takes quite a long time. It's not literally a case of you know one minute is normal, next minute is a fly, and that's it. And it's not like the original where it was just a fly's head and a hand. It's the whole thing gets changed, and it's progressively worse every time that Ronnie sees himself. For instance, when uh, he phones up, it's something like a couple of weeks later. And um, he's walking around on, he's got two walking sticks and he can kind of walk properly and he's really struggling. Um, he can't, he hasn't, um, what's it, he can't walk properly. Um, bits of him is starting to fall off, like at one point his ear just falls off. Um, and then, that's about it. Then he comes back later and he's able to move around, he's able to stick to walls because of the suction, the kind of suction pads that flies have on their legs. Um uh he's lost most of his hair his face has become more grotesque uh he hasn't got any teeth anymore because they've all fallen out um and then after that uh he's got no hair left at all or aside from like little patches um his fingers are starting to kind of go like this like the old vulcan symbol um nearly all of his externals have fallen off so like for instance he hasn't got any ears left he's got any teeth um he hasn't got a, his Knob's fallen off. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, what else? It's just like he hasn't got any nails anymore. So And he keeps them in the cupboard. And he doesn't wear clothes anymore because he doesn't see the point. So he's looking in the cupboard and it's got bits of him all in there. And he calls it the Brundlefly Museum. And then he realises that... And then he finds out that um, Ronnie's pregnant with his kid. And from that point onward, he's convinced... He's... No... Like, completely convinced that if he can fuse um, himself, Ronnie, and the baby, he'll be human again. So what he does is, Ronnie goes to have an abortion, he kidnaps her, takes her back to the lab, and then tries to um, throw it to convince her to, put her to go through with the fusion. She almost does, because Stathis Bournes, who is the editor of the paper, follows and goes... <coughs> He goes to attack Brundlefly, and uh, in retaliation, he pukes all over his hand and melts his hand, and then pukes all over his ankle and rips his foot off. At that point, he's completely had enough, so he's going to become huge. He's going to fuse the two of them together regardless. And um, Ronnie's like, no, I can't do this. So she puts her hand on his face and pulls his jaw off. And then um, he changes one more time, and you actually see the proper fly underneath. Um, he throws, Brundlefly throws her into the, um, the telepod, <coughs> and then he goes in the other one, Stathus with a shotgun, blows the connecting cable, and then, um, he, uh, separates the two pods, and by that point it's too late, and the actual teleportation sequence starts. Brundle tries to, the Brundlefly tries to get out, but it takes the door, and Brundle <coughs> teleports the two across to the third pod. And um, when he gets up, when it opens up, <coughs> this Brundle flies just an amalgamation of bits of metal and glass. And you know, like for instance, uh, his legs are gone, so he's got effectively just the the, um, the connecting cable and bits sticking off that. He's got bits of metal sticking out of his back like shards. Um, his like, for instance, you can hear it, his lungs are screwed. He's like, <gasps> and he's literally just dragging himself on the floor. And he goes up to Gina Davis, who's basically just crying at this point, and just says, you know, I can't do it. And Brundle grabs the gun, puts it on his head and says, kill me. Well, he says, kill. And she says, no. And he says, kill, properly. And then um, she shoots him and blows his head off. And then the film ends. Now, um, I'm not going to bother with The Fly 2 because it's a good film, but I think the first one is far better. The Fly 2 is basically um, the boy, the son of Seth Brundle and Rory, Ronnie, sorry. You never actually find out her surname. Um, and it's meant to be that he's, he grows up really, really quickly. By the age of five, he looks like he's about 20 some, you know, 18 to 20 ish. Um, He's got Seth Brundle's IQ. He's just immeasurably clever. 
and he's basically confined to this lab and you know all that sort of stuff and then he uh, properly mutates into his fly form which is what it should have been like for not like um, Seth Brundle's one however in this version yeah it's much bigger it looks more insect like um, but he figures out how to cure himself by um, taking it. it's called a gene swap uh, which is what he does to his adoptive father a guy called Bartok who owns who uh, Seth Brundle worked for is Bartok Industries and uh, he does the gene swap in the end and uh, he ends up curing himself now this film the first fly film is just a work of art it's not really it's not a horror as such it's kind of a horror love story and it's kind of well, I mean on here it just says um, a frightening but extremely moving and romantic horror starring Jeff Goldblum as an over ambitious scientist who accidentally merges himself with a housefly whilst conducting a bizarre teleport experiment a journalist who has fallen in love with him whilst covering his endeavor suddenly finds himself caring for a horrible creature whose half insect whose insect half gradually begins to take over this is actually a very very good film it's very well made it was done by david cronenberg um it could have been really grotesque and everything and yeah it, some parts of it are but it's not kind of like oh i'm a monster and everything oh i'm gonna kill myself blah, blah, blah. it is actually a case of what how far would you go to retain something that you are inevitably losing like your humanity and all that so and kind of where in scientific nature should we not cross you know is teleportation a, a thing of the future or is it something so dangerous that we shouldn't mess with it that is a science question that's probably be asked, been asked somewhere, but I haven't looked for it. But I am going to leave this off with a little thought, and I've given this a lot of thought. The next time... Oh, by the way, if you have seen this film, you'll know what I'm talking about, and I'm hopefully not going to put you off on this. Next time you fancy getting a kebab, just think about it. the scene after Seth Brundle has had his jaw ripped off, and his skin starts to come off. I'll let you think about that one because when I told that to my brother, it put him off having a kebab for quite a while. So I'm going to let you think about that one. And the next time you're eating one, you a donut kebab, you'll be sitting there going, This tastes really, really. Hang on. What about that bit from the fly? Ugh. I'm going to leave you on that one. So I'm going to come back later with another review of a classic film. Ta ra.